What's going on? Good morning, afternoon. I don't know. Uh, morning. Hey. Morning. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Good <laughs> morning, everyone. Uh, oh. Hello, hello. Hi, Diana. Hello. Tell us where you're coming from. Yeah, tell us where you're coming from. Represent your Ooh, city. And then what's wow. Wow. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. Nice. nice. Goshen, India. Mumbai, wow. love it. Oh, Mumbai. Turkey. 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 Uh, Mumbai. Uh, yeah. Welcome, everybody. Uh, like LA. Yeah. 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 What's going on? Brazil to LA. I love it. Yeah. Natalia. Uh, Paula. Hi, Hi Natalia. Where, 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 where are you guys from? Or where did you guys grow up originally? South Central. Like, South, South Central. Central. <laughs> oh, sorry. I read it. I didn't grow up there. <laughs> oh. <laughs> So excited. <laughs> Bethany, you grew up in South Central. I right? am, yep. I am. I have, raised in LA, yeah. South Central, moved to Pico Rivera uh, by high school. So it's it good. Same awesome. local, I know. No. <laughs> I'm from the Inland Empire. I grew up in Rancho Cucamonga, so out east a little more. Yeah. Nice. I'm out from the valley. Got that heart from the hood. Mm -hmm. ooh, ooh. No. <laughs> Oh, uh, Rachel, where, where did you grow up? I'm sorry if you said it already. I missed it. Rachel. Los Angeles. I'm more Glendale bound here. Man, everybody's in Los Angeles. That's rare. <laughs> or, so Man. Hi, Kylie. Hello. Hey, Kylie. Congratulations. Kylie. Oh, Kylie. Uh, hey. hey, Kylie. Well, I, I don't want to say it for her, but. Uh, she recently got like brought on to uh, uh, Disney TV as a storyboard revisionist, which is nice. yes. fantastic. I love it. Sister. Hey, hey Kylie. Sister. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> so proud. I am very proud. Uh, that's awesome. And then, uh, yeah, everyone's from Southern California, man, you guys. Whoa, that's rare. That's really rare. Um, I mean, I mean, everything's here, right? You could drive an hour in any direction and just, you know, Big Bear, Las Vegas, true. Couple, couple that, you know, go up north. No. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, there's good food. There's like a lot of reasons to be from here. That's true. That's true. <laughs> yeah, that's true. And you're uh, like, today we're representing Los Angeles. No. <laughs> for sure, man. For sure. Uh, Rachel, you grew up in Glendale? Yeah, Glendale, and then I think I moved around a lot, but I think mostly Glendale. I went to schools mostly in Glendale, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's awesome. Uh, that's crazy. Uh, I live in Glendale. That's why. I was like, I love it here. Um, but like, Shout out to Din Tai Fung, right? No. <laughs> if you, I'll be moving out to, uh, oh, Cameron starting as a PA at DreamWorks on Monday. Hey. <laughs> Ooh, from Georgia, love it. Congratulations. Yeah. yeah. Cameron, congratulations, man. Nice. That's awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. Man, it must be so weird starting a new job in quarantine. It's like, uh, you know, you're, you're kind of like new, new gigs, but not really a new office. Same, same office, <laughs> virtual same office. office. Yeah, same apartment, same home. Same like studio, you know, but new gig. Um, have any of you guys done that? Like started a new gig since quarantine? No, right? We all had our jobs before quarantine. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. But definitely I mean, I wrote work from home, like new shift. <laughs> yeah. No. I know. Yeah, let us know how it goes. Uh, let us know how it goes, that new job. Because I feel like I have a ton of uh, friends that like start new jobs in quarantine. And you're like, that must be so crazy. That must be weird. It's true. A lot of people are still hiring. Yeah. A lot of people are. Animation, yep. for sure. Mm -hmm. Yep, for sure. Which is why we're going to give great advice today so you can get those jobs. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. For like, sure. Connect, connect, sure. connect. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, uh, one real quick thing because everybody, <laughs> I don't know whether this is relevant or not, but um, because everyone kind of grew up in LA, if there was another city in the world that you would want to live and work what's the one city you would you would uh alternately live in and work let's go around rachel Vancouver, universal health care oh sorry i went for that you're going to canada now <laughs> canada yeah man yeah 
Yeah, yeah. I get it. I get it. <laughs> uh, Mercedes, well, you've been to Vancouver, right? <laughs> What's that? You've been to Vancouver, Mercedes, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I've been pretty? up to Vancouver a few times. Nice yeah, because it's really pretty up there. It's so green up there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I like Orange County. I worked in it for a little bit, too. We drive a little crazy, but and it's still kind of close. No. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. So, so the Out of anywhere. <laughs> So I, I asked a, another uh, city in the world that you would rather work in, or that you would work in. The whole in, world. I mean, of LA, you said Orange County. I guess I consider. I mean, I I could say maybe New York. You know, it's a New little York. cold, but you know. Hey, I dig it. I love it. I love it. <laughs> Maria, where where would you want to? What what other city would you want to uh, live and work? Oh my goodness, there's so many places I want to visit and I haven't seen yet. Fun. I want to say Italy though, just because. I want to be chilling in a vineyard with some wine and be able to work, <laughs> go to a beach, it'd be great. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if there's, are there animation studios in Italy? Well, if we work from home for forever now, oh, true. Oh, we'll yeah, be good. True. Or Santa Barbara, you know, anywhere really by the beach. That's where we're Santa going. Barbara. <laughs> Santa Barbara's the place to go. No, I changed my mind. <laughs> I like how Stephanie's like staying with Still here. Like, like California. 30 minute radius. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, Mercedes and I have like our escape plan. We're like, we're good. Let's go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then finally, Rachel, where would you, where would you, besides LA, where would you live and work? I think of like Stephanie, I'd probably stay in California. Like Santa Monica <laughs> is a really, is a place I'd probably stay in. Hey man. Yeah. That's cool. That's cool too. Yeah. <laughs> That's so funny. Mine was always London. Like, can, I had a friend, I had a friend that was in animation. He uh, grew up, uh, his name is Benson Shum, and he, he sort of like uh, was born and raised in Vancouver. Not born and raised, but he, he kind of grew up there. And he went to London to work on Harry Potter for like a couple years. And I'm like, oh my God, that sounds amazing. I mean, can you imagine going to London for like one or two years, you're single, you're young, and you're working <laughs> on Harry Potter, you know? That's I the mean, ultimate you know, thing. And I was like, dude, I'm so jealous. Sure. <laughs> yeah, right? Working on Harry Potter in London. Holy smokes. Anyway. Uh, You're right. Maybe like Spain, you know, start thinking outside the box a little. That's what I'm that trying to inspired me you already. To do. <laughs> See, but Stephanie and Rachel have a good point because a lot of the places in California are expensive. So if it's your dream and it's being taken care of for you, get that nice house in the beach in California. Perfectly yeah. that. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. It's Spain too. That's a that's a huge one. But I mean, now that we're working from home, right? Who knows? Maybe you know the world is our Easter. We can go anywhere. No. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and you are the pearl. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, I think we can. Um, thank you guys for sharing all that <laughs> stuff. Yeah, I think we can all get Canary Islands. Ooh. Wow. Um, Really quickly, um, before we get started, um, a couple of years ago, there was an um, animation studio on Ho in Hawaii called Hawaii Animation Studios. And it was kind of like founded by a few um, people from the industry, like Pixar and that kind of stuff. Can you imagine Hawaii Animation Studios and then going to Hawaii, working, you know, and just being there and being in Hawaii, working in the industry? I mean, that's the place, so right? Cool. Maybe, maybe we all got the, you know, picked the wrong place. No, you like that. No. <laughs> I mean, Bobby, if you're going to start another studio, let's go. <laughs> Yo. Oh, and that, yeah, that's not that hard, right? Starting a yeah, studio. No, not at all. No, not hard. Yeah, uh, anyway. We'll all put our money together, you know, forever. <laughs> no. I can't imagine just kind of working in the industry in Hawaii. But anyway, I just, sorry, I had to bring that up. Uh, they're not around anymore, but uh, that'd be amazing. Um, anyway, we can, we can sort of get started if you guys are ready. Absolutely. Uh, 11, 10. Yeah. Um, and, uh, Rachel, why don't you, uh, take it away? All right. Good morning, everybody. Thank you for joining us today. We are Rise Up Animation. Thank you for coming to the Latina Journeys in Animation production panel. We're here with Stephanie Lopez. I'm going to butcher this, even though it's, it's a really pretty last name, but I'm going to butcher it because <laughs> I'm like that. Hey. <laughs> Hey Glee. Hey Glee, there you go. No, I recently got married, so that's why it's new to me too. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Secretary, so Maria Azelia and Mercedes Salazar. Nice to meet you, and we're also here with Bobby. So um, thank you for joining us today. Uh, we're really excited to hear you guys speak and have our discussion. So I'll let you guys take it away. So just tell us who you are and what you do. I'll go first, yeah, sure, all right. <laughs> Hi, I'm Mercedes. Um, I'm a line producer at DreamWorks uh, TV Animation. Um, so I'm currently a line producer on uh, Madagascar Little Wild, which premiered uh, um, during Labor Day weekend. So check it out. It's on Hulu and Peacock. It's amazing. Um, and yeah, I've been in the industry for a while. Worked at Nickelodeon, worked in feature for a little bit um, at DreamWorks uh, Feature. And yeah, just here and happy to be here and chatting with all you guys. Yay. Thank you. Hey, I'm Stephanie Lopez at Higley. Uh, so I'm actually a coordinator, production coordinator for Disney Animation. I've been there for a couple years. Uh, I started at the Disney Company uh, about seven years, I want to say, total. Uh, I started as an intern. I switched over to temp uh, and then got a, a permanent position. Um, I've switched over from casting to marketing and I'm in production now. Uh, so really excited to be here. Buenos dias, everyone. My name is Maria Zelia. Um, I am baby to the industry still. I'm just a little over a year, but I started at DreamWorks as an intern, then I switched over into a production assistant for a DreamWorks feature, and now I'm a production coordinator. So excited to share and learn with you guys today. So what show did you intern on, Maria? I did intern on Madagascar Little Wild, which is the best DreamWorks TV show they have to offer. You should all check it out, and the <laughs> Halloween episode's coming soon. All right, that was all good. <laughs> good job. <laughs> all right. So what drew you guys into animations? So what brought you to essentially what like started your journey? Um, I can take that one. Oh, all right, go for it. Go. Yeah. Go. Um, I have started like everyone else started, you know, in marine biology, going down that path first. I feel like some of us or most of us always start with something else or have a different interest and then we jump on over into another one. Um, but I was always um, inspired by Felix the Cat because he was a little brat. And he just liked to have fun and tell stories, even if they were wacky. And when I was in marine bio, I discovered that I could share my own stories through art. And my passion was being able to leave my impact on the world and help the other gen next generation tell their stories or help the world um, by creating art and creating animation. And I found that that was my way to do that. And so when I made the switch over, it was really what empowered me to go on shows like Madagascar or to work towards helping create content that would make a difference. I'm going to pop going, I'm going it back over to Mercedes now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, that was great. And I just want to say that uh, the enthusiasm that Maria, Maria shows is the exact reason why we hired her as an intern. Um, you know, I asked her about her five-year plan and holy moly, she's got a plan. So pretty impressive. <laughs> uh, but uh, um, I was kind of just floating around a little bit uh, after high school and just going to a junior college and nursing program, but wasn't really too into it uh, then. At 20, I found myself uh, pregnant, 21, had a baby. Uh, and, uh, you know, I was a single mom and figuring out, you know, what am I going to do? How am I going to support my daughter? And I wanted to, um, to get a bachelor's in, in something that was going to be, or well, in an accelerated program. So that way I could be, I could support my daughter sooner. Um, you know, my goal was to be done with college uh, when she got into kindergarten. Um, so, so yeah, I, I found a three-year um, accelerated bachelor's program for animation, and I always loved art. Um, my art teacher in high school was trying to encourage me to go to um, art school after high school, but uh, a lot of things were happening in my life, and I just didn't have that focus. And But I went back to school for something I really wanted, which was animation, and then meeting a bunch of animation students, you kind of find that, you know, they're weird just like you, that you didn't think, you know, you kind of feel like you're the only one until you meet other animation people. Um, and yeah, I graduated from there, got an internship at Cartoon Network, uh, and then got hired as a PA at uh, uh, Nickelodeon in their CG department and was there for, for a good chunk of my career until going over to DreamWorks. So I just love animation and I love, um, yeah, I love the people in animation. They're just the best. So yeah, that's really what drew me is just animation itself, the love for it. And then, uh, you know, I'll never leave because the people are amazing. So. Yes. Uh, and I, I love animation and storytelling and culture. And I feel like all of us are kind of like when we're younger, you know, whether it's cartoons or you're watching Disney animated films or DreamWorks where it's just there's so like the storytelling and the creativity that goes into it. And 
And I, I feel like that it's the same kind of a thing where it's like your teachers inspire you in high school and even, you know, you, th you look through middle school, but then you do go out in the workforce and it's like, you're like, I just need a job. Like, <laughs> um, so I, I feel like I hopped around a little bit between casting and then I moved over to marketing and I was in marketing, studio marketing and multicultural marketing for a really long time. And up until a couple of years ago, um, I feel like I was applying to Disney animation, different studios for a minute. Uh, but it is that thing like you get further and further in your career and all of a sudden one day it clicks and it's like, what am I doing? Like, I wanted to tell stories. I wanted to be a filmmaker, like, you know, and, and it's just like making that jump and taking that decision of like, Hey, I'm going to, I'm going to go out there and I'm going to find a job. Like I'm going to meet somebody. And sure enough, I went to CTN and I met some recruiters and just having a conversation with them in between just kind of reopened this whole box of like possibilities for me. Um, so I switched over a couple years ago and I started Frozen 2 and then um, on Raya and now I'm on a new project. So I'm really excited. <laughs> um, re really quick stuff. Um, when you, can you elaborate on the CTN meet? Because I know that there's a lot of um, students that go to CTN and, and network and meet people. Can you, if you don't mind, like I'm going through like what that yeah, was. Yeah, actually, I feel like I was in this position where I was in marketing for so long and I love it. Like it's so, it's such a dear plate. You know, I, I will always love uh, marketing and short, like uh, storytelling in that form as well. But it is that thing where I went to CTN. Um, I, I kind of, I, it sparked something where I was like, hey, I want to go back to production. I want to tell stories. And I looked around. Um, I saw CTN was going to be in a few weeks. So I bought a badge. It was $30. <laughs> I got, I was like, I'm going to go and I know I don't have the fanciest badge and like, you know, I'm going to go and I'm going to meet some people and just go, maybe I'll even go a couple days. And I kind of look, I, I met different people and they do have different booths where you can meet recruiters at certain times, or you can even just talk to production people. And honestly, it was the best thing because I met which he ended up being my supervisor for, you know, a while, uh, Derek, who was a coordinator, and he was just telling me about his life at Disney Animation, and um, I, it went from talking to a coordinator to, hey, come back at this time, there's a recruiter that's going to stop by, like, maybe chat with them, um, so just kept walking around, you know, looking at the different booths, um, meeting people, I, sure enough, I went back, and this, that specific recruiter wasn't there and there was another recruiter that said hey you should go to this panel and I kind of it's that thing of coming out of your comfort zone and I was honest with her and I, I really lucked out that I was like I don't have that badge to even get into that panel you know like if if like if that's what it is but that's what it takes to meet the person I'll buy it right now like I'll I'll figure it out um and she loaned me a badge and Camille and she's at um she's at wow. Nickelodeon now Thank but she's wow awesome. she like it was so great yeah. like Props. Awesome. Um, she was like, go meet Kelsey. So and she's on this panel and try awesome. to talk to her afterward. Yeah. And I did like this minute pitch and they were like, we actually have a job open. Like, let's talk oh, about oh, it. Oh, and oh. it took a few months, but honestly, just a lot of back and forth and, and just meeting people. It, it awesome. was great. Yeah. yeah, I think that just to follow on that, I, I think that's a great idea, CTN, the Animation Expo. Um, I know DreamWorks has, uh, usually has a booth there, and I volunteered there before um, and um, met a ton of people. And I would have to say, like, I can totally see why Stephanie walking up and talking and with her personality and her energy and stuff, why they would be like, oh, uh, yeah, you should come back when the recruiter is here <laughs> and stuff. So, yeah. you know, for the people that are going out there and going to go, you know, to CTN and, and walk around and stuff like that, the advice she gives you is, is perfect. You want to walk around and just kind of network and meet people and, you know, present yourself. And what I will say is that sometimes, uh, you know, some people are going there to look for, for work and stuff, but they look like they rolled out of bed. So maybe just <laughs> roll out of bed when you go to CTN. But um, we do go there. The studios do go there with the intent of meeting people and hopefully meeting some great talent and some great uh, production people. You know, we're always looking for people who love animation and are passionate. And so CTN is a great place to uh, to meet a lot of, of people in the industry and network. Make good Yeah. Work. And I'll jump off both of them and I'll say that it's not only CTN. There's like little animation expos. There's big animation expos. If you look around and just volunteer, I spent all last year volunteering at every one that there was possible, even if it was a small one, unpaid opportunity, paid opportunity. Sometimes you got to bite the bullet and just go and volunteer. But, you know, you will get the all access badge for one day. If you ask for like one day off, you will get all these perks that will help support that dream, too. So if you like weigh your options and see what's available, I say go for it and do it. 
Yep. Invest in yourself. Yes. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> So it's like, I feel like animation has some of the best people, some really like overall, like the nicest people out of most industries. <laughs> um, so it seems like, like being very energetic and being very determined is a very important um, part of being a production person. What are some other traits that, you know, as, um, sorry, what are some other traits that, you know, you feel would be best in a production person? Like when you, like what you, look for like what you should try to you know mm -hmm. yeah um I, i'll start this uh you know when when i'm building a team for a, a production like when i was uh hiring for madagascar a little wild um you know when you're first building a team you don't have anybody you just want to get that first person in there and kind of just set the tone and really um a lot of times it has to do with just a lot with like you were saying that their energy and their personality you know personality goes a really long way because in the end it's like do I want to work with this person for eight plus hours a day or whatever? Like, um, and, and in animation, or at least on, on the cruise that I run, I really try to make us feel like a family. So, you know, it's also thinking it's really more a, about the personality for me. Um, but, um, you know, there's also, I can't have a, a, a team with all extroverts because that would just be anarchy and stuff. So you want to make sure, you know, it, it's not like I'm saying that only extroverts and you have to be super loud and super whatever um, to, to get hired. Um, you should just really be yourself and be really genuine. And, you know, um, it doesn't necessarily have to, you have to have an interest in animation or I should say like Maria, you know, she was biology. She was in, in animation in college. And, you know, I had a, um, when I was hiring for Kung Fu Panda, um, one of the ETs remembered somebody that they had interviewed um, in the past, um, but they wanted to bring on to the show or suggested them. And her name was Allie Guzman. And she uh, was amazing. And she actually was biology major. Um, she was thinking pre-med at USC, uh, but she's an amazing writer. And so she was like, no, I'm going to go for this. And so she was working uh, in a hospital at the time, I think in ER, I want to remember, it was a while ago. Um, and she came in for the interview to PA on, on the show and she got it. And it was because, you know, she had that interest in, in, um, animation and she was working hard at a hospital and she'd gone through all that, but yet her, her passion was still, she was still writing. She was still doing these things on the side. And that's what I loved about it. It was like, she wasn't, you know, she was, um, focused on still what her dream was and what her passion was. And that's who I wanted on my team. I was like, I need someone like that because it, it also shows a work ethic. You know, I think your work ethic is extremely important. And, um, you know, I, I want to hire people with good work ethic. So <laughs> bring that up in an email or in an interview. That'll go over well. <laughs> it's true. It's true. I feel like the same, it's, a, it's like personality goes such a long way. And it's because like, sometimes it is the work hours, you know, other times it's honestly like, at least at, in, uh, at least at Disney Animation, we do rotate between different departments depending on what show. So, you know, I could be modeling and rigging and then I can be in marketing a different and then, you know, just kind of changes. And, and every, I, f I feel like even like the teams have like their own personality they bring, you know, whether it's like people in tech and them, like the different types of artists. Um, so it's really being adaptable and at the same time, like, finding that like, you know, being able to talk to different people, but also like being enthusiastic, but still like everybody's working really hard. So it's like, it's, it's like tapping into that, you know, where it's, it's like all of that kind of meets together. And it is like a family, you know, because you're going through this together. Um, and I think that's like teamwork is, is definitely one thing. And another is like being able to lead sometimes when it's needed and other times, like, you know, knowing that it's a bigger picture and part of a team and like a lot of problem solving. Yeah, I think what Stephanie said about teamwork, at the end of the day, you know, transparency, I always tell mentees this, anyone asking for advice, transparency and being your authentic self is key. Because at the end of the day, you know, we're all going to be doing overtime in the trenches together, you know, and you may need to be a team player and support where it's not specifically your job description. I'm not saying do things out of your job description, um, but, you know, if your coordinator or someone needs help and it's that one assignment that's going to keep them from, like, staying overtime, extra, extra time, and you're available and you can do the overtime, you know, just do it. Show that, you know, you're a team player. You can work hard for each other because that's what makes the team is when you can stick through those tough times. You can have that communication. You can have the sense that I can rely on you and you can rely on me as well. And we're just looking for people who are just ready to all have fun together and not really have, like, this incessant need to be extroverted or outgoing all the time. If you can show your support in your way and show that you're doing your job, that's more than fine. 
All right, some nice answers. So, let me see. So what's something you wish more people knew about production that you seem that a lot of people, that you don't hear a lot of people discussing that you wish more people who want to go into production would know more about? People don't know about production, <laughs> right? Most people yeah. don't know what production is or, yeah. you know, like you try to explain your job and they still don't get it. So, um, but I think with production, I think the key thing to remember is um, it like, uh, like Stephanie was saying, it's, you know, communicating with them and, and really being a team, you know, and production is kind of like the cheerleader of the crew. Um, we're the ones that are going to help you figure out whatever problems that you're having, whatever files you need, whatever you're looking for. You know, our job is to make sure that our artists are, are taken care of and they can be creative because that's what we need them to do. That's what they're there to do. Um, so it's really important that you kind of know how to communicate with different types of personalities because artists, there's, so many different personalities. There's a lot of emotions. There's a lot of everything. Um, so, you know, you just want to always kind of be that level-headed person. Um, you know, if someone's freaking out, for a production person to freak out as well is not good, right? The production person needs to be the person, you know, as an LP, you know, I could be freaking out inside and screaming in my head, but, <laughs> you know, <laughs> right, Maria? I didn't freak out, right? Not at all. Perfect <laughs> angel. So great. All right, good, good answer. But, uh, <laughs> I do think, you know, when I, I tell my team, um, you know, usually when we're starting um, a show, I'll be like, look, you know, I think production people have to be a bit of chameleons, um, not in the sense that you're not uh, genuine as uh, being a genuine uh, person and, and being yourself, but more so figuring out how every per person on your crew likes to communicate and communicate that way with them. So if someone is a little bit more introverted and doesn't like to talk too much face to face, well, it doesn't. I mean, we're working from home now, but, you know, or anything like that. Some, some artists like to communicate only through text. Great. If that makes you feel happy and comfortable and supported, cool. Other ones want to talk about, you know, their, their dogs before they get into work. Other ones want to, you know, talk about the game or whatever it is, you know, <laughs> Bobby's laughing. Um, Cause it's, you know, you just want to find, it's like cracking that nut. You just want to find, you know, the, the thing that they like, the thing that, that matters to them or the way that they prefer to be communicated to. And, and, um, you know, you try to communicate with them that way. And I think it really, uh, I think people appreciate that, you know, and they recognize that and it makes them trust you and it makes them uh, lean on you and depend on you. And as a, as a line producer, that's what I want from every single person in my crew is for them to trust me and know that they can lean on me and depend on me. Because uh, if they do, then they're not sitting there stressing. They're not sitting there, you know, worrying about something because they can just come and tell me or any one of my production team and we'll figure it out. Um, so I try to build that and in building that it has to do with a lot of communication. I definitely agree on the communication part. When I rolled onto my feature, when I got hired as a PA, I love that one of my coordinators asked me, you know, what's your love language? And she really made the effort, you know, let's figure this out together, how we're going to communicate as a team. Um, we also took this crazy like personality bird test and we called each other out for being certain types of birds and really trying to figure out how to best communicate with each other so we could support the department as a whole. And I feel like for production, people think, yes, the hard skills are important. Yes, the job is important, but morale and production go hand in hand. And morale should be just as equal of a thing as the hard skills as well, because you can create a morale initiative. You can create, get that bond with your artists. You know, say if you're hosting a trivia game, say if you're just doing little challenges, say if you're just asking them how they're doing every once in a while. You're mm -hmm. supposed to be that bridge for your production to make sure everything's going smooth and to build those connections and bonds. You have to think about it in a way where you're, you know, we're genuinely wanting to connect together and become a team and what can you do to bridge that as well? It's a bit of a parental role, which I, mm -hmm. I mean, I think that's why I was drawn to it. But um, I think that it, in a good way, it's a bit of a parent, uh, parental role. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then same, it's like teamwork is key. And also like problem solving. It's like, it is that thing about like putting up that, like sometimes it, it does feel kind of like the team cheerleader you know where it's like oh everything could be on fire but like at the end of the day it's like guys we have to come together like it's gonna be okay you know kind of finding that balance for sure and it's it kind of I think the biggest thing is also like knowing that everybody has a superhero power you know where it's like everybody has their own power like everybody has their own thing where it's like you can I, I think for a long time it's like especially coming in like new to animation. I was like, oh my God, there's so many different departments. There's so many things I don't know. And sometimes when you sit in that, it, it's like, uh, it, it, it does push you to learn more. And eventually it's kind of hitting that acceptance of like, you know what? 
all of this is new, but I'm going to tackle it. Like I'm going to, I'm going to learn. There are definitely like a lot of different departments where I was like tech and I'm like, what is that? Like, it was all so new. Um, and then coming in and it's just kind of like knowing like, oh, I have skills. Like, what are the best skills that I have? Like, what can I contribute? And also everyone else has the skills that they're best at, you know? So it's like acknowledging that everybody has different talents at the same time. If you feel like there are other things that you can learn, like ask questions, like try to lean in, you know? Um, so I think it's definitely like finding that self-confidence and also like seeing it in other people too, you know? Yep. That's true, yeah. And I will say that the mis big misconception is that you have to know everything about animation to come into animation. And you don't. Like, you're going to be trained just like with any other job. If you have the enthusiasm, the willingness to learn, and if you go to panels like this where you learn a little bit and can show that in an interview, you more than likely will also land a job in animation. Yeah, I agree with I agree with that. That um, yeah, everything you said, Maria. Oh yeah. Plenty, plenty of things to learn and plenty, you know, plenty of time. It's good. Yeah, I didn't <laughs> know stop anything learning when I started as a PA. I didn't know anything. I was out of out of school. Like, what the hell did I know? I didn't know anything, and and that's okay. Like, I don't expect someone who's interviewing for a PA position to to know anything. Like, really, it's it's personality and just drive like if someone didn't have any experience or even really didn't have any like you know maybe they haven't volunteered or they didn't have access to to animation stuff wherever they live you know um if they love uh jogging and they're like they're crazy about it and they you know pour their passion into that that's someone i want to talk to that's someone i want to meet because it, you know it just seems like a really interesting person you know if you i don't know I always say, I say this all, if you could bake cookies, I would say, take those to the interview. You know, I wouldn't mind. <laughs> yeah. You know, no, there you go. <laughs> right? yeah. Uh, can I ask a real, uh, like kind of one-off question for everybody? So like, yeah. you know, us, like in, in production, us artists are like a sensitive lot, a sensitive bunch. And then like you said before, Maria, or Stephanie said it, stuff is always on fire. It's always on fire. And so there's a lot of pressure. So I, I want to throw it out to the, um, to the panel, like, how do you put the pressure on without um, putting that sort of negative pressure on your um, on, uh, uh, production team, your art team? Yeah, I mean, for me, I would have to say, um, I'm, I'm so lucky that my crew and my artists and stuff are just so damn professional and just have amazing work ethics and are just rock stars and stuff. And they really, really, truly care about uh, Madagascar a little while. Like this crew is so special. We just all love the show so much. Um, so I got a lot of hard workers on this show, but um, yeah, um, stuff gets really hard, right? As we all know, sometimes things blow up and you have to figure it out and still deliver on time. And, you know, um, artists can get stressed out and stuff. And usually I, I, you know, when they come to me, I'm like, I hear them out and I hear what they're, what it is. And I said, okay, give me a minute. Let me figure this out and I'll get back to you. And whether it is, it, is it getting, you know, maybe some hope to help an OT? Is it, is it getting, you know, more artists on? Is it, you know, figuring out how we can pull back and make this, um, episode a little lighter, whatever it is, we'll figure out to make sure that my artists are, are feeling good and supported because, you know, they're creative. How can they make beautiful stuff for TV, for kids, for our audience that we're all so passionate about? How can they do that if they're freaking out about something else, whether it's personal or work-related, it doesn't matter, you know? So um, I think it's just hearing them out and, and I try to best help and figure it out as, as best I can. And I think in doing that, you really do make your, you know, in coming through for your artists, you really do make them just trust you more. And, and also when you go like, you know, you come through for your artists and you have this camaraderie with them and then, you know, you have something and you, you realize that they're going to have to work like, you know, some OT, you're like, Hey, you know, can't, and they're just like, hell yeah, I'll do it. One, because they're amazing. And two, because you've been, you've had their back throughout this whole show. Of course, they're going to kick ass and, and help you with something that they care about. It's true. And it's like, sometimes you do have to be like, you know, it's, since it's like all about communication and talk, like sometimes you'll deliver certain news that are like, oh, you know, and the artist might feel differently about something. And it's just learning to like do that. Like, you know what, like, I'm going to give you a minute, but also like, how can I help? Like, let me, let me listen, let me. And it is that thing of like giving it a second and being like, you know what, if I don't know the answer to this, let me go find out or let me see what's the best way. And like, let, we'll reconnect you know, but like, it's good to give everybody a second to just sit and be like, okay, no worries. Like, this is where we're at now. But 
we'll figure it out. You yeah, know? exactly. We'll figure it yeah. out. I definitely agree with um, what both of them are saying, but I also think with your question, maybe think about those times where problems come in that the artists don't even know about, or like if you catch the stuff before the artist does, and what the main thing that production is there to do is to make their job easier. So whatever you can do, even if it's small things like checking their time cards, making sure stuff is named right, making sure files name right, or say if like revision requests come in, like you find all the information for them and establishing that trust, um, that way it goes a long way because if they know that you're there to stick and thin or to support you, they'll understand when those hard times come in that, okay, like you're coming here because you researched everything and you're at that last resort of like, okay, we need to do this, let's get it done. So I feel like establishing that trust in those hard times or even before the hard times day to day is really key to bridging that understanding as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, especially through work, uh, uh, work from home, there's a lot of stress added there. So, you know, I, I did definitely put it out to my team, like, you know, especially the ones that have uh, kids uh, with school starting and stuff, like if, you know, adjusting hours or whatever it is to help accommodate, because we're all, you know, stressed out right now and everything's so freaking nuts um, that, you know, um, anything that production can do to make our cruise lives easier, um, I think is what we want to do. All right. So it definitely seems like being sensitive, having a good understanding of, you know, the other, your other, your coworkers, your team is definitely a very strong trait that you need to have. Yeah, and definitely. Like personal yeah. too, you know, where it's like, sometimes it's like, you got to see the bigger picture of like, it's a situation or maybe that, and it's like, you can't just carry that on yourself either. You know, it's like a personal thing. Cause it's like, it just doesn't make anybody feel good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I like that Stephanie said that. Cause at the end of the day, we're making cartoons. It should be fun. Times get hard, but it will get made at the end of the day. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Cartoons. <laughs> All right. We have a question from the audience. It's from Kylie, and she says, and she wants to know, are there any particular things artists can do to help production or how to find out if there's extra things you need picked up or help with? Oh, my God. An artist is oh, like amazing. That's so yeah. scary. Great question. <laughs> no. <laughs> Wait. Wait. I know. Oh my, what they could do for production. My gosh. Uh, <laughs> no. Um, <laughs> uh, you know, I would say that in my experience, I've had a few uh, people on my um, on my team in, in my last show, uh, Kung Fu Panda, Pots of Destiny, which if you haven't seen it, it's on Amazon Prime, so see it. It's awesome. Uh, but... Um, I totally forgot the question. Please repeat it. <laughs> what can they do for us? Thank you. All right. So there was some, yeah. thank you, Stephanie. So there, <laughs> there was uh, a few people that wanted to be artists. They were in production and then they moved over to artists. This was uh, one guy in particular, Lowell Dawson, who was amazing. And um, he uh, was in production. He was already a production supervisor on a show, but he also was an amazing biz dev artist. And so um, my art director, Joel Fainer, um, and I at the time wanted to just give him a, a great shot. And so we hired him as a biz dev artist and he is amazing. But I think one of the things that also makes him amazing is that he knows exactly what production needs before we even ask him. So I think artists asking a production person, hey, do you need this or will you need that? Like you'll you'll just maybe see a little tear come from the artist's like, <laughs> <I'm laughs> <laughs> because it's so great. Like when Lowell would turn stuff in and he already had it like where, yeah, this is what it'll look like turned on and off because I knew you would need that. I made this so that way you can turn the geo off on this and so that can be a switch because in production, especially in TV, it's like, all right, we have this glass, but it's with a plate. So we want to make sure we can turn the plate off so we can just have the glass and use there you have two assets, but it was only built as one. So we're always mm -hmm. trying to find ways to get more out of everything we make. Um, so having an artist kind of have that mindset when designing, when doing stuff is, or if they don't, then just asking production, hey, you know, is this something that would help you? Um, is amazing and I would appreciate that. And I know my, my production team would appreciate that. Um, but One of the things, uh, Mercedes, um, that helped me with that um, in production was like, um, really kind of just thinking about like, and they're, they're friends of yours, they're people, you know, and they have a job that they need to do and whatever you can kind of help facilitate that to make it easier. It's not, I mean, we can easily kind of get compartmentalized and just kind of like, mm -hmm. this is my job, this is their job, they have to take yeah, care of it. Yeah, production should take care of this. Right, right, right. right. Oh, that's but their if job. You're like, <laughs> you're like, I like Mercedes, we had lunch the other day, she's a friend of mine. But, Mercedes, <laughs> but 
could I, I know we're in crunch time. What could I do? What could we do to help out with it, you know, to push things down? To, and I think just, you know, what helped me is just kind of breaking out of the, the departments thing and just kind of looking at the team as people because TV crews are smaller anyway. So you're mm -hmm. automatically going to be close to everybody. And you're like, hey, uh, there's a lot of drama going on. What could I do to help? whether it's like labeling my whatever it files yes. or whatever and I, I think for me that was the biggest thing of just kind of like breaking out of the roles roles I guess you know yeah I think that's a good point because as artists um you know you, usually you're at your desk and you have your headphones on and you're you're drawing painting whatever you're doing you're boarding so you're very much already kind of in your own little world as you're working uh production is the exact opposite of that um, so I can see how artists can kind of forget, you know, or, you know, realize that there's other people, you know, in the production team or whatever. Um, so I, I think that's a, a great point to bring up and, um, you know, just mutual respect across the board, I think, for artists to production in the, uh, the same way around. It's like everyone is there to do the same job. And, and you know, I don't know what I would do if I didn't have every single like position that I have on my team, whether it's the PA to an editor, to a revisionist, to a director, to the showrunner, like every single person is um, necessary and important and their job is important. So, you know, whatever, if there's something simple, like he said, naming your files a certain way. Oh my gosh. Like our PA is freaking out right now hearing this. Like that's huge. <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> like that's like, Oh my God, thank you so much. You know, <laughs> It's been a while since I've been a PA, but I know. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Yeah. It's true. That and honestly, too, like, uh, another thing I feel like is we forget that sometimes, you know, there are so many people that are, did come from, like, art school or do have, like, artistic, that do just, like, chose to go the path of production management yep. specifically, where it's, like, sometimes just getting to know the person you work with, you know, where it's, like, you have a new team or you have a new uh, PA, you have a new coordinator, like, and all these things, and just kind of getting to know them, because I think it really puts you in a different state of mind, too, like, knowing, like, oh, wow, I had no idea that this person has done biz dev in the past, or has, you know, this artistic, ab like, ability that they just don't, you know, that's not something that you go around telling people, um, and I think that would also go a really long way for, like, morale for people, and just, like, knowing each other, and, and being able to, like, uh, know that the background, the different journeys of people is kind of helpful and it might set like a really great tone for moving forward and getting through those tough times together. Absolutely. I agree. With Absolutely. That yeah. Like, so you know, with Lowell, who I hired as a biz dev on, on KFE, on Kung Fu Panda, um, uh, I, I heard that he had done um, um, prop designs and turns and stuff. And then, he, and then the, the art director on Kung, uh, uh, King Julian um, heard that too. And so when they needed some help, they, they tried him out and he was doing some freelance and he did great. And now he's a full-time artist and he is amazing. Um, so yeah, it's everybody, whether they're in production or not, a lot of times production people, uh, PAs, coordinators, whoever are really trying to get to that artist role. So, um, yeah, I think just talking to everyone and you're right, TV, it's really small and, and, you know, we, we do work really, really closely together, which I love. That's why I love TV. Um, so yeah, just getting to know each other is really great. Yeah, and then from an artist coming to perspective, production perspective, I think no question is too silly, no question is too stupid. Um, you may be having a problem that another artist did that we've already solved, and just feeling confident in that we can figure out the answer for you, that's a huge thing as well, because we'd rather figure out the answer or figure out together, rather than you go through all this time struggling for like two, three weeks at a time, and not knowing the answer. So definitely always feel open, and I feel like no question is too silly or crazy as well. All right, I love it. So we have another question. So we have a follow up to the last question. So I'll get to you, Angelica, in a, right afterward. But Kylie wanted to follow up with, um, how are you dealing with creating those relationships and camaraderie between the team members and new members while everything is virtual and isolated? I will start with this one. Um, yeah, if it's all good. Um, I am a huge big fan of, you know, if you want your team to do like fun morale stuff, you got to be the silly one on the floor doing it. And so just bringing people together, I like what Stephanie said earlier about making sure we're all aware of each other, even if it's something as simple as a coffee or like a weird little slideshow 
or a fun challenge my team and I on our feature team did, like the Yeti challenge, where we all dressed up as weird things or dressed up our dogs as famous paintings. I think that's a great way to bring camaraderie together. Um, but I definitely think you, it's also getting out of that comfort zone, stepping out of the box and just going out and doing it. Um, once you take the initiative, then you'll have everyone open up a little bit. And it's really fun when we're all kind of being silly. Or if you're hosting trivia games, it's really fun to see people argue about types of pasta too. So just going out there and doing the thing. <laughs> Um, yeah, I would agree. I think, you know, you, you can figure out ways to keep morale up and, and get to know each other uh, from work from home. I've had a few people start uh, since we've been work from home. So, um, and, you know, it's been mostly in production. So, you know, it's pairing them up with their coordinator. And, and I, you know, uh, some of my coordinators actually, they have like a, a, a room, you know, a, um, a BTC room, a video conference room that they just open up and they just sit there together. Both the PA and the coordinator are working in their homes, at their desks, but they at least have that open. So it feels like they're sitting right next to each other like they would be, you know, when we were in the office. Um, and we try to have happy hours. You know, we have monthly happy hours. We, you know, um, you know, I know other shows uh, at DreamWorks TV have done um, escape rooms online. Like they've done, that's pretty cool. And my husband also works at DreamWorks TV and his pipeline team did that. So that was pretty cool. Um, and just, yeah, you just, I think, really have to get creative of how you're going to do it. And dressing up is fun. Uh, we used to do this in the office on Kung Fu Panda. We used to have dance o'clock. And it was, I forget what time it was, but it was my animation artist trying to get my animation director um, to get up and dance. And so at a certain time, the music would just start. And I would hear it. I'd run out of my office down the hall. And then we'd just start, we just dance in the hallway. And then it would all be done. We'd just all go back to work. And so... <laughs> The other, you know, the other day I get a, a an IM from a, a coworker and says, hey, can you, I need to talk to you. Can you hop into this meeting? So I hop in and then all of a sudden the music just starts and they just start dancing like that. And I was like, okay. And so it was just 10 minutes of dancing. And then we all hung up and I went back to work. It was the best thing ever. So like doing those things, keeping things light um, and fun and just remembering that we're together, um, I think is really important. And just checking in on, you know, I have a leadership meetings in the morning with like my art director and, and, um, you know, the EP, co-EP and the uh, supervising producer and, um, and everybody. And I always, you know, let them know like, hey, you know, check in with your teams and, and see how they're doing. And, and so they're all really good about doing the same thing with their teams in a smaller way. It's just, um, you have to, you have to really kind of put some effort into it for sure as work from home, uh, but it can still be fun and you can still grow and learn about each other. Yeah, be creative for sure. It's that thing of like finding those small moments when you can, even if it's just a, like uh, the other day it was just taking an image of like before the meeting, after the meeting, adding it to the notes, like silly things like that, where it's just like remembering that, you know, you can have those small moments in between. And, you know, sometimes you just break out laughing over the, like the conversation just steers to some way and you're like, oh man, and kind of like highlighting like that was great meeting guys or anything like that, you know, cause it goes a long way. Like those little moments and finding those creative spaces to be able to like add that into the day. Well, you know, most of the day, like there's so many times where it's like, we hop on a zoom every 30 minutes, you know, even 15 minutes sometimes where it's like the day just goes by. You don't even have time like, to pee. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yep, yep. <laughs> so it's like finding those seconds where like if sometimes if you have the same couple people, you know, like making little things to tie between them, you know, where um, I think it's finding those small spaces to be able to like find creative ways. Yeah. And it's also, I think you bringing levity to every meeting that you're in because yeah, you're there to work, but five minutes of a little time out of just goofing off and being silly and, and or joking around. Like I literally laugh all day long uh for work it's amazing so like we are like the madagascar crew is definitely a goofy crew and we have all kind of uh we're, we all joke around and we're all so close but i think laughing is really really important uh especially in animation i mean what the hell we're making yeah. cartoons <laughs> we better laugh yeah all right yeah i guess well, now we're taking more questions from the audience. So from Angelica, um, what are your thoughts about starting out as an artist virtually during the pandemic? Uh, they're wondering if, if they should wait to apply until the studios are fully opened up or again in their city. No, I think you should absolutely apply now. Um, yeah, I think that, you know, just have your portfolio looking amazing like you normally would, an interview like you normally would. It's just a screen. That's it. There's no other difference. You're going to, you know, if you're whatever you're... I don't know if, it's, if this person is like a, a biz dev or a board artist or whatever they wanted to be, but um, 
you know, it's, it's the same, just think of it as the same way. And I, I would not recommend waiting until studios open up. I mean, you should totally that's, just that's jump the thing. Right Yeah, for sure. Like, I feel like, especially right now, um, it's, it's connecting with people and, and let's talk about how do you get a job? Like, how do you even get a start? Because let's be real. Like, that is one of the biggest things. Like, how do I even get my foot in the door? I know everybody has different ways to get in. And like me, I feel like I had to do so many internships before even getting like that one paid internship. And it's the weirdest thing. But I think the good thing about right now that we are at home, like LinkedIn, you know, find people or, or make the cold calls just to like know people, just to learn about their journeys. Like that's all, that it's not always going to lead to a job specifically, like every conversation, but it shouldn't just be about like this open job, you know, like it's, it's learning about each other, but also like finding that experience. Because if you, if, for example, you meet someone and it's great and you can get them an interview, sure, like pass down a portfolio and stuff. But at the end of the day, you're going to go in there and you're going to have to interview and you're going to have to bring it. Like that is also like put the work behind too, you know, where it's like, um, whether it's finding that temp agency, whether it's finding that random job, you're not always going to get straight into the studio always. Like there are so many companies though, that are like third parties or like Wild Canary or like smaller ones that like work with the giant corporations. And it's like, maybe if, if that big job doesn't open up immediately and you're not getting it, for sure, work on your resume, like take those jobs, get the experience because you want to be able to get into the room. And when you do have that, like, oh my God, this is the interview is like the one in a million. Like I've been trying so hard. You want to have that resume to back it up. And at the same time, show that like I'm passionate and I'm eager at the same time. Like it's finding those things and those different, like taking yourself out of your comfort zone. Like don't wait. You're right. Like Mercedes, like don't wait till the studios open up again, meet people, whether it's LinkedIn or random messaging or, you know, just like finding out, like finding those third party people. If you can't get straight in the studio, like that is definitely like, that is going to be key. Um, and definitely like getting your resume ready and also just meeting people. It's just good. Cause you never know, like you might be in a great spot and then a few years go by and, and then you're just curious about other things. Like definitely just know other people's journey and like have that conversation, have that dialogue, make friends. Yeah. I, yeah. I think that's really a good point of making friends and just making good impressions, you know, and, and, you know, there is no one way to do things. There's no one way to, you know, and if, if like your first job is, I mean, Spielberg started out in the mailroom and he, so you know, there's, there's tons of ways to get into where you want to be, but don't, you know, I, if you're, don't feel discouraged if you're not getting an artist job right out of school. I mean, that's really, really, really hard to do. Um, but I think, you know, just being proactive. Um, and like I tell my daughter, who's, she's 19 now and going to college. And I just, to tell her, you know, if you want something, no one's going to come knocking on your door. Like if, if, when she graduates college and she's like, I want to be this, no one's going to come knocking on her door and offering her that, you know, you really have to go for it and, and work hard. And sometimes, you know, it is, you know, I have a board uh, artist who uh, we hired as a revisionist and then we pro promoted to a board artist. His name is Travis. Absolutely amazing. And when he interviewed for us to be a revisionist, he was working at, um, at, at a, at a, optometrist place he was working with like it had nothing to do but his boards there was so much potential there and and my supervising director and my supervising producer after the interview they're like we want to hire him we we believe in him he has so much fire and his boards they look great he he's it's a revisionist it's an entry level he's got you know he he has that raw talent but he still needed obviously help and working towards and becoming a better artist like like all artists do but I think it was you know just um, it was okay. He kept interviewing. He kept applying. He kept drawing um, and honing his skills at the same time while working at, you know, an optometrist, you know. Um, so it's just really, you know, going for what you want um, and, and trying to network as much as you can. And I know Maria knows there's like a million uh, um, communities and organizations, Rise of Animation being one of them, obviously you know, that you can really find. I mean, it's, there's no excuse to not finding it or, you know, look at yeah, like IMD yep. pro free trial, a couple weeks, get some contact numbers, you know, like make, do the cold calls once in a while. Like try if, if it's that thing where it's like, Hey, there's not an internship open or any position. open. it's like, Oh, ask the question of when is it better to check in? Like when, when is, 
uh, when's the next best time that you guys typically hire? When, when is that moment where you would like me to check in? And then put in your calendar, do the, do work in between. And then sure enough, like call back or check in. Hey, how's it going? Just want to let you know where I'm at. Like keeping yeah. that dialogue open for sure. Don't, exactly. don't call back like the next day though. Like, no, no, that. don't do that. Don't get too that, ties in, that. <laughs> that ties into my point that I'm going to make where if you meet with people and you should be meeting with people because this advice is universal. It's not just for artists. It's not just for production. It's not for anyone who wants to go into recruiting, you know, keep the resume updated, keep those experiences. If you can't get a temp agency, make a project with your friends. That's equal experience because you guys are keeping each other organized with deadlines. Yeah. It doesn't have to be a paid job. It doesn't have to be a job, a fully experienced job. It has to be experienced. Organizations like this, Latinx in animation, women in animation, getting portfolio reviews, coming together, panels like this, you know, you can just say that was an experience because you're learning things and you're applying that knowledge. And I also firmly, firmly believe, reach out to people with intent. Sometimes we can help you, sometimes we can't help you, but if we don't know what we're helping you with, we can't help you at all. And even if, you know, I may not be hiring, but I do know some recruiters, I could just, you know, pass along the information. Hey, they would love to talk to you. Or if you tell me, like, I'm really looking to go into development. I'm really looking to go into this. Maybe I have a friend that can be better suited to talking to you than I would. Or even if it's, you know, get to meet people like Stephanie said, like, let me know what your favorite cartoon is. Let me know what your favorite pastry is. Talking about desserts will get you a long way with me. But, you know, start that conversation and keep it going. And then don't be afraid to be like, hey, I applied here to your recruiters because your recruiters will see that. Even if you apply now and you don't think you're ready, the recruiters will see you applied and they'll see you in three months again when your portfolio is stronger. Even for resumes too, they'll see you again. We do keep a track, or they do keep a track, I should say. Um, we do see resumes again and we do remember them. And you know, if things have changed and we show that you're trying to grow and trying to learn, that is really impressive and that's really key as well that we do wanna see how your growth is. We don't just wanna see you at your best because if we see you at your best, like can you go any higher? We won't know that as well. Yeah, and definitely knowing like your interests, because that's the thing. It's like, you can say all day, like, I just want a job. But at the same time, it's like, well, what are you interested in? What are you looking for? Like, because then if you it's like, oftentimes, it's like, if you do hear it, like over time, a few weeks or months, or, you know, you'll hear something opens up. And if somebody said specifically what they were interested in, that sounds like a similar realm of what somebody's looking for, then it's like, you can direct them to that, you know, but if, if you don't quite know, and it's kind of like, all up in the air then it's like okay well it could be anything i suppose but if you're like direct and have intention like that's a whole nother thing where it just it, it goes such a long way i love it too because what well, we love speaking with people with intention because that's where you see those who follow through really break into the industry i've told people you know connect with me on linkedin with the message but then i'll also send in my email i make it a bit hard but i want to see that hustle i want to see that you really really want it and i want to learn more about you but if you're not meeting me halfway and telling me about you or following through when I tell you to email me this or give me your resume to review and they don't give it, then I can't really help you if you're not willing to help yourself. And that's the other thing is because even when you refer somebody, it's like your name is also on the line, you know, it's like, you're, mm -hmm. you're, you're like, Hey, this person, I really think that they'd be great. And you're going out there on a limb. And then if you know, the other person's not following through or not like emailing or checking in or any of that, then it's like, okay, well, I just went on a limb and now this person I had no idea and they're on this completely different path and they don't even, you know, it's, it's like have different dreams, but having that dialogue and having that intention and, and like restating, it's really helpful. Just don't be too pushy. Don't be too pushy and not that, nope. and, and don't do that thing where it's like, Hey, is that job? Is that job? Is that job? Cause you don't want to be one of those people either. You know, oh, it's, yeah. like, it's like, let's get to know each other and still keep track, but let, don't be like, Hey, every time and just poke at it because it can be really <laughs> stressful. I know to not have a job for me to be looking, but like people, it's I time to be luck and skill. Like, so yeah, yeah. you know, it's I like mean, if like you were in skill. person and you were an intern at a studio and you want to get informationals from people and there's, I mean, everyone's there. You're like, oh my God, freaking out, geeking out over amazing artists and stuff. But, you know, you got to read the room a little bit and figure out when is the most appropriate time. If, <laughs> if you want to be an editor and the editor that you're, a show that you're interning on is freaking stressed out and stuff, don't knock on their door. Don't ping them right then. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Pick your moment. But, um, you know. Uh, but I also don't want to discourage, I feel like, you know, it, it seems like, because Maria and Stephanie and I, obviously, it would appear that we're all extroverts. So I don't want it to, to, to freak out anybody who isn't as forward or loud as um, we are. Because, um, you know, everyone has a different skill set. And I think that, um, you know, every type of personality out there uh, is necessary for a team. 
So if you're introverted, if you, if you don't like to talk too much, I have production people who are much more on the quiet side um, and they're amazing and I love them. And they bring great energy um, and calmness uh, to the team, you know? So, um, you know, I don't want people to freak out and think that you have to be allowed and to give it a minute. If they don't answer the message on LinkedIn or something, like give it a minute because sometimes it's like, you don't know what the person's working on. You don't know if they're in crunch time, like all those things, give it a second, give it a couple weeks, give it some time, you know, to recheck in, not like every day. Hey, did you see that? Hey, did you see that? Hey, did you see that? Cause then that gets really tough. Cause you're like, Oh my God, like, I'm so sorry. I'm trying to keep my life together right now. <laughs> <laughs> I will say, yeah, give it a minute. I would also say don't carbon copy emails. This is where it really goes my messaging with intention and really understand that if you like have those communication barriers where, you know, you don't want to meet virtually reach out. Like I'll be more than happy giving advice over email. It doesn't have to be like an immediate one-on-one -on -one or I'm like, what do you need? It's like, you know, starting the dialogue, um, be like, Hey, you know, I'd love for you to answer some questions over email and being direct is really great as well because it shows us that you're at least trying. And that's all we want to hear is, all we want to see is people who are at least trying to like learn more and move forward. Yeah, that's another smart thing actually that you can mm -hmm. make you look like you're being very considerate is, <laughs> is that, <laughs> hey, you know, I know you're busy. I got questions. What if I just send them to you and you could email me whenever you have the time? Like, ooh, if someone came to me like that, I'd be like, oh, I love that person. Yep. I got some time to answer these things. <laughs> you know, so I don't considerate have to. of you. <laughs> <laughs> you're asking for it to be on my time. <laughs> All right, so we got two more questions. So this one comes from Cameron. Yay, Cameron. Woo. And they say, hello again, since Monday is my first day working as a PA and likewise my first day working in the industry, do you have any advice for someone first starting their career in this role? Also, any advice on how to best prove oneself to move up to being a production coordinator? Looking at you in particular, Maria, thank you. I'll start then. Um, I would say the first thing, like Monday morning, like get your sleep first. I know it's exciting, but try to get some sleep and that way you're ready and not like already like nervous because you're at two hours of sleep because I'm a horrible offender of that. Um, but I would also say be open, you know, be open to opportunities to need you, whether it's like either that promotion or either a job or something. And this is for everyone. Be open to whatever's coming up next. But um, to way to prove yourself, I just think don't think about it. Don't think about proving yourself, thinking about doing your job, doing it 200% and be ready to support I think there's a whole misconception of I have to be perfect. I have to come in and be perfect. I have to do this job. I have to know everything. And especially like Mercedes said earlier, the entry level jobs, you're not meant to come in and know everything. You're meant to come in with a good mindset, a good attitude, a good work ethic, and be able to learn. And even for internships, you know, even production coordinators too, they have to come and learn the style of the show, how to communicate with the people, how to work the program. Anyway, so there's no predetermined or like set template for you to live as a person. I think coming in and wanting to just learn, know everyone and just be, have a good time and be able to support is extremely key. And on top of knowing people, don't be afraid to reach out and like sit down with everyone. Whether um, your TV teams are smaller, so if you're on a TV show, like we plan ahead and like set designated times to meet with your leadership, but also meet with your fellow peers. And networking up is just as equal as networking like sideways as well. You know, the people who are around you, like PAs, coordinators, PCs, PAs and other departments are in post-production are extremely important as well because at the end of the day you will be like pun intended rising up together and you will get to know each other really well and those where those promotions will come from it will come from leadership as well but you know sometimes your friend will know where a job's coming or you can apply or have a promotion and they'll tip you off before the leadership does sometimes because we're all a bunch of chief small staff in animation as well so definitely just take the time to know everyone set coffees down informational you know maybe do a fun gift we know matt is well known for their gift wars and up my gift game too but don't be afraid to show yourself and get to know others as well. And I would say, I think, uh, you know, really when going into a job, you just want to focus on that job, focus on doing it well, you know, you have time. Um, and, it, it, you know, and I, I've heard this a lot and, and I've done some panels or talking with interns and stuff. They're already like, how do I get promoted? And they're just, they haven't even gotten into the industry or they're just starting. It's like, you got to learn a lot of stuff, especially in production. If you're in episodic production, for example, it's like, you know, episodes are happening, whatever the rotation is, but it takes almost pretty much like a year to do an episode. So going through one whole path of one episode and experiencing every single step along the way, you have to do that several times to really get the experience of this episode blew up because of this, this episode blew up because 
all of a sudden there's COVID and we're working from home. Like there was a lot of stuff we had to figure out when this all happened. But um, I, I think that you just want to go in um, just ready to do the job that, that you've been hired to do and ready to do it well and take notes and be present. Like I know it's really easy and a lot of people feel more, don't, don't feel comfortable on camera, but I have to say, I, 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 you know, and I tell this to my production team all the time, especially my PAs who tend not to put their camera on. Um, if, if we don't see you, we're, we, we completely like, we're just looking at, at, at the squares, you know, it's, it's not like you're in the corner of our eyes sitting in the corner in the room anymore where we might see you when we turn our head, we're not going to see you. So if you want to be a part of the team and you want to, you know, and you want to participate and you want to be remembered and you want to be looked at for questions and answers, um, then you have to make yourself be present. And I would give you that same advice if you were, if we were in the office, you know, I always say, if there's room at the table, because sometimes it's a big, huge meeting, there's not enough room, sit at the table. I mean, don't sit in the back. Don't sit in the corner. Um, you know, you have value and stuff. Obviously, don't push your showrunner out of the way so you can take their chair. Uh, but, you know, just make yourself present and, and, and do the job that you've been hired to do and do it well. Because I'll say this, like, I have hired people that um, obviously have a, a, a goal to be an artist. But the way in a lot of times is production. So I hire them as a PA. If, if they don't have a strong worth that work ethic when being a PA, whether it's, you know, getting the model packs ready, uh, answering emails, getting the questions from overseas out to the leadership that need to get those answers, whatever it is. If I don't see them working hard for that, then how, how, why would I give them a chance to, to work hard in the, in the industry or in the, in the realm that they want in the department that they want. If you're not working hard in the job that you don't want, I'm not, I don't have a lot of faith that you'll work hard in any job. So it's really putting that work ethic there and, and showing what you're made of as a person. You know, if you're a PA, don't go in there thinking, well, I'm just going to hang out with the artist and not really worry about my production job because I want to be an artist. It's like, well, that's not going to go over very, very well. So, um, you know, I think it's just uh, really being there to, to do a good job, take notes, ask questions, never assume you know something because um, uh, that's my big pet peeve. And I tell this to all my interns and all my production people is that um, ask questions because I send you off on a, on something I need you to work on. And it's like a three day thing or whatever. I say, you know what, get it done by Friday or whatever. If Friday comes along and I didn't hear anything from you. And as an adult who I've hired and who was working on my team, I would expect you to get it done at the time I asked. But when you bring it back, you know, all this stuff is just kind of not making sense or whatever. And as I ask you questions, I find out you didn't understand the assignment. My first question to you is going to be, why didn't you ask any questions? Because now you've just wasted your time. And now I have to get someone else or I have to do it myself in record time because um, you didn't want to ask questions. So I, it, there's nothing wrong with asking questions. Please do. But, you know, I would say be ready to, to work hard on the job that um, you've been hired to do and to meet great people and, and know that, yes, your goal is to be a production coordinator soon. Great. But know that there is a lot to learn and there's no timetable. It's not like you're like, I want to be promoted now. You know, it, a lot of it's timing. A lot of it is just, you know, it just works out that way. A lot of it's just luck. A lot of it has to do with, uh, you know, when shows are ramping down and other shows are ramping up, you know. Um, so don't feel discouraged if you have, you know, in a year, I want to be a PC and you're not a PC yet. It's, it's okay. It, you know, everyone has a different path. And I started, I, when I was hired, me and uh, this other PA were hired at the same exact time. We both started and we were two, uh, we were the two oldest PAs. We were both parents. There's not a lot of PAs that have kids and there's not, so, you know, I definitely started later and I did at a time feel like I was behind everybody, but what is that? It's nothing. It doesn't mean anything. I'm on my own track. I'm in my own path. It doesn't matter. So I think, you know, it's okay. It's good to have goals to get promoted, but it's okay for it to take time because it will, you know, and don't feel discouraged. I will yeah. also say too, oh, mm -hmm. sorry, Stephanie. For introverted folks, there are ways to show up without being loud and vocal on an extroverted production person or like on a team in general. There are ways to show up, you know, if like Mercedes said, just show up, turn on the screen. If that's all you're going to do for the week, that's all you're going to do for the week. Just show that you're active and you're taking notes. But, you know, maybe make small goals. You know, I'll talk, speak in this meeting. I'll like try to connect this way. I'll try to this. And the more you build up the small goals, it doesn't have to be super extroverted, um, but the more you achieve these deadlines and are doing your work 100%, the more that the, those who will see it will recognize the hard work and they will recognize that you're a boss and you're doing your job and you're doing great. And they'll keep that in the back of their mind. 
it's not always like I have to be loud and proud and in this meeting, it's, you know, being subtle and doing your work is just as effective as well. Yes, and I think that we need to remember that because I feel like we're, <laughs> feel like we're saying to be loud and proud all the time, but I just wanted to remind you that when you're in these meetings and stuff, don't, don't go just saying, yeah, I think, or yeah, I like this idea, or I have this idea, and you go on this whole thing, and we're like, oh my god, we only have 30 minutes for this meeting, and we still have to get the EP to agree on this, and there's a lot of thoughts here, like, read the room, you know, if we're heavy in a conversation about something, maybe don't jump in right then, you know, pick your moments, and you'll start to learn more and more, you know, when, you know, you can say something, everybody does, everybody reads the room, no matter what title you are, so just, you know, just don't scream out what you're thinking all the time is all I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, that's definitely the thing. It's like, and also like be confident in yourself, but also like it is a thing where everybody has different skills and you don't always have to be super loud. You don't have, it's like some people are really amazing at like shotgun or specific like Excel sheets or like it's, you have your own thing that it's like, I'm really good at this. Like I'm, and just doing the task and also like you'll start feeling it, you know, as you get, like whether you get promoted or don't get promoted, because you know, that that's a thing too, you know, sometimes it takes a minute and is that like, you start feeling more comfortable. And I know you guys probably mm -hmm. felt the two where it's like, oh man, I was in this fluster and I had no idea. And it's like slowly like, oh wait, this thing that they're asking me, even though I it's a different apartment or some different tasks, it's like, oh, I, I've done that before. I remember like I can start, it's when you start building the pieces yourself where you're like, oh, I don't need to like ask questions, ask questions, ask questions when you don't know. And then it'll start also clicking. So you start like setting things up. Like you, it's like, oh, I already, I, I know how to do this. Like I can remember, I can start building my own systems or I've seen this, you know, different people have different ways they like to do things. And it's kind of like watching all of that and being like, what works best for this show? What works best for this task? Like, looking at all of that and starting to be able to feel that you can make those decisions on like, okay, this is probably the best route for our specific need. And that's when it starts like feeling a lot better. And you start feeling more confident about the job itself too, you know? I love that. Yeah. Especially if you start feeling overwhelmed, know that you can sit down, take a minute. If, even if something has to be delivered, depending on time, of course, like take a minute and discover what is priority. What is priority right now? What can be done tomorrow? And once you, like, start getting in the groove of learning that or, like, you need to ask the question, that's where that question comes in. Like, when do you need this by? When do you, like, who do you need me to turn it into? And being very open about, hey, like, I need to figure out this, like, this situation and then take it on and lead, like, lead with it. That's really key as well as a PA or a production coordinator. And also, like, a huge thing for me as well, once I learned it, I wrote it down. I put it, I, my Google Keep is full of checklists. So if I could do the task, I had my own like sanity check as well. Like, okay, the notes are formatted this way with this included, this included, this included. Um, so use your resources to keep yourself in check as well, because that'll show if you have your like yourself, then yourself in check. If you really, really don't know, then that's when you ask the question. You don't ask the question when you don't immediately know and you haven't tried to figure it out first. And sometimes you, that same question will come up to like months later, complete years will go by and you're like, how did I do that one thing when I was... So like, yeah, take notes, like write it down somewhere, put it in a master sheet of like, this is the department I was, this is all the notes that I took in between or like uh, pros and cons, you know, cause that's going to come up and you might have to do that task way down the line. Even if you are promoted, even if you do become a PS or like line producer, you know, it's like, you're going to have to remember that stuff later. You know, you can't just go and rely everything and drop. It's also unfair to the PA, you know, it's also unfair to the coordinator. It's like, you know, your stuff, but also like you'll gain that experience. And then you'll, you'll have like your own place where you can go and look at like, okay, that thing in my brain, where is it? Like, I know I've done to try to even recall it. So taking notes, like Maria, you're right. Like that is saved me so many times where it's like, oh, that one task, like I don't, that one small thing, like looking at those things really is super helpful. Yeah. I will say too, even if you move up, there will be a day where you might have to do something from like the lower positions as well. One, because you should be a team player and always supporting is needed. But two, it just happens. Sometimes production gets crazy and you need to kill a fire and you're like, okay, I'll just do it myself. And, you know, whether it's something as simple as time cards, taking notes for another department, all that stuff, it's really good to keep fresh in all those skills because the more you go up, you will forget because you have other responsibilities, but it's really great to be able to keep up to date with it. Mm -hmm. Yes, you absolutely. I mean, it's lower position, higher position, it's more different positions, I think. And yeah, as a line producer, uh, you know, you jump in wherever you can and wherever you need to. And, and I think production in particular is very much based on experience. 
and and you know tv shows and and or just any animation it's very much a living thing so you're going to experience so many different things on just one show and and stephanie's right you're going to pull draw from that and so it's really just getting that time under your belt um and enough time and enough experience you know um working on a show that's really really hard you actually learn a lot of stuff because everything's all over the place, you know, it's a mess. So it's, you learn a lot more than being on a show that may be like in third, fourth season and that sucker's just like chill, you know? So, um, you know, it, it just learn as much as you can and know that there's no time frame and, and, and give yourself a break if you're trying to like get hired or get promoted in a year, just chill out and give yourself a break and, and really take it all in and, you know, and, you know, do it right. Do it the way that, you know, you'll be successful and you're going to set yourself up for success. I completely agree with that because when I got into my PA position, they told me in the interview that everything will be chaotic. We'll be throwing me to the wolves. And like, you know, you know, we all take it as a joke, of course, but I, you know, I saw her that and I wanted the challenge. I wanted the challenge of it's going to be crazy. And it was, I was in lighting, you know, it's a catch all department at the end of a feature. It will get chaotic. It will get crazy, but how you get mentored or how you get taught or like going through that process really really prepared me to become a coordinator because I had to stretch when I needed to stretch and that's where like my original point of being open to opportunity if you think you can handle this and the only thing that's stopping you is your fear go ahead and, and take that job or take that job in the department or research the department you're learning about because even those tough times may be super beneficial for you in the long run All right, so our last question from Sarah. In terms of resumes and cover letters, what are some things you wish you would have known in your early steps in becoming an intern slash PA? Um, I think the biggest thing is, because, um, you know, I, I went from doing like four internships before even getting my one internship for Disney, and it was like casting, and then I had to do another like couple rotations of internships between that. But meeting and talking to recruiters and everybody has their own different style. But I know um, I, I talked to somebody on LinkedIn recently that said that um, they mentioned that their professor said like, oh, nobody reads cover letters. That's not a, like you don't have to do. And I'm just like, what? Like, no, do your cover letter. And also like it's tough because sometimes you want to like fangirl it or like I know I was in a place like that where it's like it was my dream. Like I love this so much, you know. But it is that thing of like also talking about yourself, like whatever you can't show on that resume, talk about you as a person, like what inspires you, how, you know, all of those things, because that's really what a cover letter is for, you know, cause like, cause you don't have a resume and you, there's, there's a lot of different styles. And um, I know everybody kind of has their preference and different recruiters have different formats that they like that sometimes they'll say, Hey, just reshift it, you know, but keeping it, um, make sure you have your contact information, obviously have an objective at the top, you know, say, you know, Hey, I'm a person in that works, you know, at least in mine, it was like, Hey, working in marketing, looking to transfer back into production. And, you know, I'm passionate about these things or even like bullet points of uh, skills that you have, like uh, whether it's like uh, fast paced environments, good with communication, like your own things where it's just like highlights that at the top. And then also put like, make sure that you have your experience, but make sure that the experience that you're putting on your resume is also correlated with the job you're looking for, you know? And that doesn't mean like, if you work retail, that is completely a skill you keep on there too, you know? Like that is, but make sure that you say the things that whether it's like fast paced environment, worked on short deadlines, like highlight that stuff because that's what's gonna get towards, if you're looking for a job in specifically production, like talking about those things on your resume, um, that's like list everything that's experience related and how it ties to the job on the resume. And then in your cover letter, talk about yourself, but also talk about like your dreams and hopes and all those things. But also don't fall into this hole where you're like, I watched this movie and then you all of a sudden wrote an essay for a page and a half about how you love the specific movie, you know, where it's like you're dissecting all these things where it's like, but I, I know that movie and I love that movie too. But like, what about you? Like, what I, do I know things about you? Um, and that's important too, because because recruiters do read that stuff. Uh, for me, it's been uh, a while since I, uh, um, was a PA or an intern. So I don't remember what my cover letter or my, or my resume looked like, but I will say when I'm looking at resumes now, uh, if you guys could please proofread your resumes, <laughs> send them out. Uh, cause man, I, I see some, uh, typos and some pretty bad things, um, on resumes. So just make sure they're, 
they're clear. And also make sure that um, they're just easy to read. Some, you know, maybe I just need glasses, but some people like the, the font is so tiny. They're trying to pack everything in or, or they're artists. And they, so they have all this beautiful art that's kind of like, you know, the opacity is brought down and you have the, the resume information on top of it but it's really hard to read. Like I'm going to remember that those things were hard to read and it's not necessarily remembering that candidate in a good way. It's, it's, you know, you want to stand out in that other way, like Stephanie was, was saying with those examples. So just proofread and make sure it's clear and, and concise, you know, uh, don't go over a page, please. And, uh, <laughs> it's not the stuff that you do want yep. to take out, like for sure, you know, it's like, yeah. it, it, it's kind of like the stuff that's moving you towards that job that you want. Yeah. And if it's like, hey, I did this 10 internships and so like you can start picking and choosing once you get, you know, like it, you, if you have options, guys. <laughs> yeah. And exactly. I don't know if you necessarily have to put your GPA on your resume. Just saying. I yeah. see that. <laughs> <laughs> I will say, like, learning to let go of what is important to you versus what is important to the job you are applying for is key. There's a lot of things in resumes reviews that I do and I sit down with people and they're like, yeah, but I think this was great experience. And I'm like, yes, tell me how it relates to the job. And they'll sit there for like two minutes, like trying to justify it in their brain. If you have to justify it, let it go. There's more room that you can be taking up that shows your strengths, that shows your personality and that flaunts what you have. Because what you probably have is strong matter if you think it isn't. Like Stephanie said, with retail experience, guest service. We know if you can handle guest service, you can more than likely handle a PA position. Mm -hmm. It is definitely sometimes more stressful being in guest service than it is in being in a production. But I will say, like Mercedes said, don't put attention to detail because if there is one wrong flaw and you put attention to detail, you're already lying by that point. And yeah. <laughs> you don't want to be in that position as well. And I think like the biggest, biggest thing I do recommend is remembering that your resume and cover letter are living, breathing organisms. They should always be changing. They should always be updated. Never be afraid. Even at like my stage, I ask for resume reviews all the time. And I'm in the industry and I'm a production coordinator, but I got to this point because I'm taking all the advice and I'm picking and choosing what works for myself to represent myself to the strongest capability I can. So I definitely recommend being open to change, being open to having it mold, being open to modifying and picking and choose what you want. And as well, show your volunteer work, show organizations you're a part of, show that you like to bake cookies. Show, I had someone say that they're a Rubik's Cube master. And I still love that <laughs> to this day because I felt like challenged. And I'm like, you know what? I want this person just so I can try to beat them in this game. But you know, it depends on what you want to hear or what you want to learn from this production, but they also want to see what they can learn from you. And your resumes and cover letter are supposed to be just enough to get you inside the interview. So don't give away everything. Give just enough for them to be like, I want to meet this person. I have to meet this person. And then flaunt it in the interview and you'll be good. In a good way, I should say. Like, of course, be like nice and be yourself. But I think being confident in who you are on Word is just as key as being confident in who you are in person as well. And I agree with all of that. And another small thing that I just like popped into my head too of, um, I feel like at some point, uh, there was a recruiter that mentioned like, oh, don't put, you know, like sometimes it's, it's like, I live in X, you know, I live in Pico Rivera in, Ca you know, in California, but it's like, maybe don't put that because I'd say like, there's, I guess some people have mentioned like, oh, if you put that, sometimes people will assume like, oh, they're not going to want to make the drive out here. Like they're not. And you know what? I did that drive from Pico Rivera for like four years. And I was like, yep, getting to Burbank, like dropping off my sister to school, like going to school, going to downtown LA, going back to like, and it's like, that's my own business. You know, it's like that, you don't, you don't need to say all that. Like, you know, it's put your information. You don't have to say where you're driving from or where you're commuting or all of that stuff. Cause at the same time, like if that comes up during the interview, great. And you can tell them then, but you don't necessarily need it on your resume. That's definitely key too. And I think a lot of misconception is we're in animation. Everyone has to have a portfolio. Production doesn't need a portfolio. Don't throw something together. Don't throw like random stunts together. And especially a huge thing, if you're an artist wanting to start in production, because I do understand, because I'm kind of in a weird mentality myself where we need jobs at the end of the day, but we also need to learn about the pipeline. We need, need, need more time in our craft. We need, need, may need a way to support learning that goal. Your the entry point is production, and you're going to do 100% in that job. Only show production. Show that you're going to be dedicated to this role 200%. And your own personal life, your own goals, that's on the side. You are more than welcome to share that your production team with your production team when you get hired. But make sure they also know that you are here dedicated to the production as well. Because artists, like Mercedes said, do start as production sometimes. But 
it's really key to show that you are here for the role that you applied for. Um, I would say on, on that note, just to jump off that really quick, um, I don't, I actually do like when in interviews, if someone says my goal is to be an artist and they're coming in for a PA interview, that doesn't sway me from them in the least. Uh, you know, I, I see that they are driven and they have drive and stuff. Um, so I do like seeing that because I, I also, I would appreciate that because what if I, I did hire someone thinking, all oh, right, they're going to be in, I'm going to, and I have it all planned in my head and they're going to be here for a while. And then all of a sudden I find out later on that they want to be an artist and that's what their goal is. And so I, I like hearing that stuff in the beginning. Um, I don't think it's a knock on you. I think it's, it's to me, it, it's, uh, it's cool that you are so passionate about wanting to be an artist that you're going to take a job that is somewhat related in the field that you want, but it's not exactly it, but you're willing to do it and do it well. And, and if somebody, like, yeah, and if somebody like passes on you because of that, like, oh, you know, you want to be an artist, I'm not going to pick, like, look for that opportunity that is going to get you closer to artists. And, you know, one day you're going to come back around and they're going to be like, hey, remember that one time I was rejected? <laughs> that one thing? Hello? No. <laughs> Yeah, I will say, like, I wasn't trying to, like, deter everyone. I would just definitely, like, because I, I know there's some people who go in, like, I want to be an artist, but I'm going to go in production. But, I like, they treat it like an art interview instead. Yeah, that's that's nice. what I'm saying. Don't do that. Come, like, show, like, you can show your passion for your art, and that's great. Mm -hmm. Come for the job that you applied for, though. But yeah. I love, like, Mercedes took the chance on me as well. So I am more than grateful for that because um, I do have different angles in production. Well, listen but, to her. I mean, this yeah. is how she was when she was an intern, so. <laughs> But yeah, uh, yeah just, just show up. Be excited for what you're applying for. Be excited just to be part of the industry and to show yourself. And again, transparent and authentic. And I just Stephanie said, be like, if you don't get the chance, don't get it. Move on. Keep going. I got rejected from DreamWorks like internship the first time, and I got it the second time because I was meant to be with Mercedes. I fully believe in that. Yeah. So yeah. you know, and don't be afraid of the rejection. Mm -hmm. It's like you, I, I remember one of the first interviews right out of college where it was an internship for casting specifically. And, uh, and it was like ABC casting and I went in and they're like, yeah, it just doesn't seem like even with all your, you know, I, I did the thing where I did internships at agencies because, you know, they're like, oh, fast paced environments, all these things. So I did a lot of that, but it was like, well, you don't have specific, um, it, like actual onset experience per se, you know, with this specific thing that we're looking for. And then interviewed for Disney Channel casting, got that, came back around the next year, like, same peep, same couple people, ABC casting, didn't even remember I interviewed them. <laughs> and they were like, oh my God, so great. You worked for the, and I was like, wow, like things have changed for sure. <laughs> and then I thought, and it was great. Like, it's so weird how sometimes like you will get rejected and it's like, oh man, like you feel really bad about it. And then, you know, time goes by and you find something else. And then, you know, if you, you meet each other again, like, great. Yeah. It's so it's so crazy how it works that way. And and I would say, you know, just don't be discouraged if, you know, you don't get that first job or, you know, rejected is such a harsh word, but I guess, you know, but because <laughs> it just takes time. And there are a lot of reasons as to, you know, when, when we're hiring for a team as to why we pick who we pick, whatever it is, you know, it could be, you know, this personality would, this PA would go really, I, it's, I'm hiring for this coordinator and this coordinator's a little bit more introverted. So kind of getting someone as a PA to help with the bringing out their shell seems like a good team. Like those are a lot of factors I think about when I'm hiring for my team. So, you know, it, it has a lot to do with just timing and stuff. And so just don't get discouraged. And also don't like, <laughs> Don't curse or get mad at anybody who didn't give you a job just because it's a very small industry and we all know each other really well. And, and um, you know, we all end up working with each other at some point. I'm sure at some point in our careers, Stephanie and I will work together. Yeah. Sure. yeah. <laughs> it's, true. It's, it's, super, <laughs> yeah. it's super small. Like everybody's always rotating around. Like it's, it's so crazy. It's such a small community. It seems so big. And then the more you make friends, the more you talk to people, like, honestly, it's yeah. just, you know, that's that's so, kind of, yeah. that's what it is and just make sure that you have mutual respect for everybody and you know whether you're uh, a pa or coordinator and you're training an intern treat them just like you uh would want to be treated you know and um and you'll go far in this industry because you know it's nice right. to work with nice people uh, i will also say too oh sorry bobby no, no just for like aspiring professionals you need to remember too you're interviewing the position just as much as they're interviewing you you have to see if you're a right fit for them and then bills aside, like we all got to pay bills at the end of the day, you have to make sure, are you going to fit on this, in on this team? Are you willing to be committed to this team as well? Like, how are their personalities? If they're all really extroverted, can you handle being around all these extroverted people? If they're really introverted and you're an extrovert, you know, like, 
finding your rhythm with a team and the interviewers that you're interviewing with is really, really, really key as well. So make sure, so know that it's like equal ground, mutual respect, like Mercedes said. You're interviewing them, you're, like they're interviewing you. And if it works, it works. If it doesn't, you keep going. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, I was going to say really quickly, I um, had, a, had a good friend that um, a couple years ago was applying to a Nickelodeon live action uh, position. I think it was like a pr production position in no, uh, Nickelodeon live action and uh, she didn't get it. And she was so heartbroken by it um, th because she put all her hopes in it because she was um, trying to s switch careers um, and uh, to, you know, from waitressing getting into um, sort of like production for like a uh, live action or like um, anything like that. And she didn't get that position. Um, and through her, um, not to be melodramatic, but like through her tears, she, she <laughs> wrote a thank you letter um, to the Nickelodeon live action uh, people that were considering her and just saying thank you for the opportunity. Um, it's great meeting everybody and just kind of gave this kind of like a really heartfelt of like um, uh, email of just saying thank you. Um, and, um, and after all that passed, um, a couple months later, um, the person who got that email from her remembered her because of that thank you email and forwarded her to the animation division in Nickelodeon. And she'd never worked in animation before at all. And um, she was just so impressed by, I, I think, the sincerity and kind of like the passion that she had for, you know, wanting to break into the industry, afforded her to the animation division. And uh, she got in that way. Uh, she became a Nick Turn, and now she's thriving in the industry. So sometimes you kind of never know of like, Sometimes it's kind of like the rejection of it. Um, what you choose to do with that rejection kind of um, determines the next phase of your life. If, if, you, if you'd sort of done nothing, but she chose to, uh, uh, mm -hmm. to sort of thank them. And then um, they, were so, um, they were so moved by it that they, they recommended her in animation and she, she went to animation immediately and she was she's started thriving immediately and so that's her career now so i mean sometimes that i mean i listen rejection oh boy <laughs> i tell everybody i you know like having i mean i've been rejected by every studio in hollywood and i'll probably get in the future rejected by more studios in hollywood but like i think um it's just part of it you know mm -hmm. It really, really is part of it. And, you know, uh, you, you can't take it too personally. You can be bummed about it, you know, um, sucks. But, you know, um, you kind of have to pick yourself up after that and, and kind of like do what, what's next for you, right? So. Um, timing, timing, timing. Yeah, time, and for time, sure. Time. Yep. That was a good timing point, and Bobby, as far as like, uh, you know, line producers, we talk to each other all the time and it's like, oh, you're looking for someone. I interviewed this person. I didn't hire them, but they are amazing here. Mm -hmm. And you send them the stuff. And so with that recommendation and with, you know what I mean? So there's always a lot of reaching out to fellow producers like, hey, do you know anybody? Hey, did you work or have you interviewed anybody? And it's like, you know, so yeah, you should always you know, I think that thank you email is a great way to kind of just for them to remember you and to, for you to kind of ha have that last word and set the tone for their memory of you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. Yeah. Oh. oh. What do you think, Rach? We're at All right, so I think we are hitting our time limit. So. <laughs> <laughs> right, with fun. So before so we go, soon? no. But let's see if we can keep going. <laughs> All right. So before we go, if there's any one last thing you want to leave our audience before we leave. Go on, yeah. Yeah. Go me. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, I will say, reach out to us. You know, um, you could find me on LinkedIn. It's Maria Zelia. It's like right here. There we go. I can point. Um, but I definitely think reach out to us um, with intent, message me, please message me or else I will not see on LinkedIn. Um, but I definitely think don't be discouraged. 
I like the whole point of rejection. If you really, really total up how many internships I applied to throughout my school time, yes, I was like applying with an animation degree because I transferred over, but it's probably around somewhere 400 applications I filled out. I only maybe heard back like with a rejection email or like you know that I didn't get the position maybe like five times. And just don't feel discouraged. Be prepared when you apply. You know, preparedness and timing is key. And I used to think, especially since I'm a bit newer, that that was a just cheesy line that everyone tells you. Uh, but there's truth to the cheese. There's, you know, you're meant to be where you're meant to be. Your journey will come when it's meant to happen. And if you're really, like, feeling that self-doubt, immerse yourself in the community. You know, there's the Animation Happy Hour podcast, which I absolutely love. I just caught up with. It, to educate yourself. There's Latinx in animation, Rise Up animation, Women in animation. Rise Up in animation will have, like, their review spots open again at the end of the month. So prepare yourself for those opportunities. Empower yourself fully immerse it. If you're in a situation where your family doesn't understand, educating yourself to educate them is super important and it will kind of bridge that gap and it will stop that discouragement and help you move forward. So uh, connect with me. Let's talk about pastries. I love pastries. Um, <laughs> and have a good weekend, everyone. Stephanie, if you want to take it away. Yes, I want to say, yeah, same, but believe in yourself, believe in yourself, believe in yourself. I don't know how many times like believe in yourself and I have to tell myself to, you know, where it's like that, that thing where it's, it's timing meets the opportunity, Re like you'll have your moment, but also when you have that moment, like you'll be prepared, you know, it's like work on that, work on your resume. And at the same time, like you brought up Maria family and it's like there, I remember there was some times where I, I had to realize that like, Hey, I'm halfway through college, all my experience is a certain way, and as scary as it was sometimes to take an internship that was free, and you can't always afford it, you know, where it's like, yeah. like, can I even make that, like, and, and having to pick, like, you know what, I'm going to take that school loan, and, and my dad being like, you know, as super supportive, sometimes, like, other times is like, why would you take a free job when you can get paid, like, you can get a normal job, why don't you do, where it's like, having that thing where, it's like long-term goals and also like what you want to do and putting that time into yourself and not feeling guilty about it. Like love what you're doing. And if you're not loving what you're doing, find that thing. And also like take those opportunities to learn and like believe in yourself, keep pushing forward. And if it's not this time around, and honestly that like how many applications have we sent out, you know, where it's like you go, you do it online and all you have is that little bar that's like, okay, in progress, in progress, like, oh, rejection. And you're like, what happened in between that? So much time has passed, you know, where it's like, you don't even know sometimes, but that, that, that's the thing. It's like, we don't really always know what's on the other side, like where the recruiters at, or if that position was somebody getting maybe, you know, a promotion within, or, you know, all of those stuff where it's like, apply often at the same time keep learning and making connections you know and just like find that thing that sparks your own joy and also like what's pushing you forward and remember that like if you're enjoying what you're doing and the pre and even maria you brought up like doing your own side projects with friends like if that's making you happy that's gonna go such a long way and you'll just start like sharpening your own craft you know for when that time does open up when it is the timing meets you know opportunity um, and I think that's, that's the biggest thing. Awesome. Damn, I'm supposed to follow that. <laughs> uh, I think um, what I would love to leave everyone with is that, um, you know, no matter where you're coming from, no matter what, you know, your situation is, you can absolutely, if this is what you want to do, um, you know, I, um, I was a single mom. I <laughs> was going to call I was going to night school to get my degree and I was working full time and it was hard. So, uh, but I mean, I'm a line producer now and I, I love my job so much. I love working in animation. It's like my dream job. I'm, I'm super happy. And I never thought when I was, you know, 21 years old and I had my daughter, I, I did not think that it would be a possibility. And like Stephanie was saying with the internships, I mean, I'm pretty sure I think all the internships now at the big studios are paid. But back then they weren't and they were credit, uh, you know, you would get credit. And I did, I actually, you know, had to move um, in order for me to afford to cut my hours to drive out from Rancho and Inland Empire all the way to Burbank for an internship that was three days a week. And then I would work those other two days and I had my daughter. So I just had to figure it out because I remember having a, a teacher who is, a, she's in production as well. Um, but she was my senior teacher for my portfolio class. And she was like, 
internships are one of the best ways to get your face in front of people. So I would really recommend to look for those and apply for those. And, and even if you think it's not possible, you know, cause I did, I thought it was impossible. She's like, you can do this. You can figure it out. And I did. And it wasn't easy. It was freaking hard, but um, it was really, it was really worth it. And I love what I do. So, you know, if I can do it and, and, you know, with a kid and going to school and all that stuff, it, anybody can do it. If you just have that, if you just really want it, you know, you don't give up and, and, and you go for it. Right. <laughs> Final <laughs> word. There we go. <laughs> No, she has advice too. No. Yeah. <laughs> great. So all thank right. you so much for coming. Uh, it was great seeing you all. all right. awesome. thank, thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank, you guys. thank you everyone for tuning in. Thank yes. you for setting this up. So exciting. Yes. yes. Thank yeah. you. Woo. Rise up and Woo. 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 Make sure to come next weekend for the cross organization panel. All this advice and these organizations we were talking about, they will be there next week. So come learn more about them. Yes. Yes. All exciting things, guys. Nice meeting you guys. Thank you. Nice meeting you too. Bye. Bye. Bye.